What's going on everyone, it's Barna here back at it with another video and uh, welcome back to Proving Autos and once again to my M240i, a car that actually hasn't featured on the channel now for rather a long time so I thought let's get it back on today and uh, actually answer the question that I've actually been asked the most about since owning this car and that is why did I buy the M240i and not the M2 because there's actually a good few reasons why uh, you actually might want to consider uh, the cheaper car, the M240i, uh, rather than the full M car. If you want a full M car, of course, just go and buy an M2. But before you do, uh, watch this video right until the very end because uh, I might be able to save you guys quite a bit of money. Now, just be clear, don't get this confused with the M2 competition. We'll probably go over that in another video. So we're talking about the original M2 or the OG M2 as it is otherwise known. Now, actually, just before we get into the video, um, there's a little bit of housekeeping to take care of. Now, I am going on a big road trip with the M240i. Uh, that is actually gonna take place uh, actually a couple of days uh, after this video goes live. So um, now would be an absolutely perfect time to make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, because otherwise you are gonna be missing out on two huge videos uh, that are gonna be coming to the channel soon and that is gonna be uh, of that trip, okay? So uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, a good 94% of you guys currently aren't yet. So uh, yeah, it'd be great to get more people on the channel and uh, yeah, just uh, build, help us get to uh, 1k subscribers and also uh, do go and give me a follow on instagram as well uh, details are in the description i'll leave the uh, username on, on screen for you now uh, because i'm going to be uh, posting live updates uh, from the trip as well now i'll give you a little bit of a teaser uh, for of what i've actually the two videos that i've actually got planned uh, so stick around to the end of this video to find out what that is so anyway without further ado let's get into the reasons why you might want to buy an m240i over the m2 So yeah, I suppose the purpose of this video really is uh, really to uh, compare points between the two cars and then uh, hopefully this will then make your mind up uh, of uh, which car to buy, I suppose. So anyway, let's start under the bonnet because uh, as no surprise at all, uh, there will be differences under the bonnet. So the M240i has the B58 uh, three litre six cylinder engine. Now, this is actually the newer engine uh, that they've um, put in it. So that produces 335 brake horsepower as standard and 369 pound foot of torque. Now the M2 uses um, the older N55 engine, which is of course what they put in the older version of this car, the M235i. Now that produces as standard in the M2, 365 brake horsepower and 343 pound foot of torque. Now, if you guys were actually paying close attention there, you will notice that the M2 actually produces less torque than the M240i. That's because this is a much more robust engine and it is definitely, uh, definitely the one that I would personally pick of the two. And it has actually been proven now that um, a stage two uh, BMW M2 will actually make less power than a stage one M240i. And uh, yeah, that is down to this absolutely legendary engine. I, I'm actually a little bit confused as to why they actually put, uh, where, why they actually gave this car the newer engine and they gave the M2, the OG M2, the older engine. That's still, it's still a question that sort of baffled me for uh, quite some time actually. But, uh, but yeah, those are the facts uh, for power. So um, it is really fair to say that if it is just pure power you're after, then the M240i is the one to buy. So yeah, even though the M2 actually makes more power as standard, uh, it's only half a second quicker to 60 than this and prone to a few more problems as well. And of course, they're both limited as well to the same top speed, which is 155 miles per hour, which of course, you're not gonna use that in the UK because uh, the maximum we're allowed to drive it is of course 70. So uh, that's not really gonna make any difference whatsoever, unless of course you go to Germany or uh, obviously you have a track day.
So I suppose what I've just mentioned about power, uh, that is all well and good. Uh, however, from here on, um, this is where, uh, I mean, apart from a couple of points uh, towards the end, uh, this is where the M2 actually starts to uh, come into play a little bit more. Uh, for instance, you get, I believe in the M2, you do get more equipment as standard. Uh, for instance, uh, now correct me on this uh, if I am wrong, but I do believe you get uh, cruise control as standard, uh, you get Harman Kardon, heated seats and so on. Probably even pro nav as well, possibly, but uh, I'm not too sure of that. Uh, you don't get anything uh, like that standard in the M240i, all of them are optional extras, uh, which is actually a real shame. I do think it's a, a bit of a piss take, I think, uh, some of the optional extras actually on the M240i. Uh, and of course, not to mention that um, as standard on the M2, you do get uh, a limited slip diff as standard. Now, you can opt for um, where, um, whereas on the M240i, uh, it is an open diff. An option would be to uh, go for uh, an M performance version, uh, M240i, and uh, and if you and if you and if you actually don't um, go for one of them, you can opt to uh, have an aftermarket one fitted. Uh, whether that's uh, an M performance one or uh, another make, uh, you know, obviously that is. Um, that is entirely up to you guys, but um, I do think uh, I think Performance M at one point. I think they had a bit of an offer on uh, one point for the uh, limited slip diff, and I think I do believe um, it was about around about two grand. I think uh, to have one put on uh, that was including fitting as well. So um, I do think I think down the line that is definitely a worthy, definitely a wor worthy upgrade for the M240i. I think probably when I go for a uh, stage one remap that will probably be the time to have one put on yeah I mean, it's a bit difficult really for me to actually compare personally because um i've never actually driven an m2 so we're just going i'm just going by um facts and figures okay so i have absolutely no doubt at all that the m2 is the better handling car um Whereas um, I do think with the M240i, you do have to uh, have some, I think, I do believe you would have to spend a little bit of money uh, to get it up to M2 stage. And, uh, you know, that is something that can be easily, very, very easily achievable, I'm sure. I'll just get around this roundabout quick. Oh, acceleration opportunity coming up here. I mean, this is just, that's just a, a good example. Oy. Okay, pal, steady on. I mean, yeah, that is just an excellent example on just how quick this car is. I mean, you've just put your foot down and it is just, it just feels totally instant. It's just, yeah, just unlike any other car that I've ever driven. So that just makes you, yeah, that just really puts things into perspective on how quick this car is. So you sort of might sort of think, do you actually need an M2? The M240i will do things just, will just do things beyond expectation. Another point actually, um, why you might want to go for the M240i over the M2, uh, this is actually a good point for this car, um, whereas is actually fuel consumption. Now, um, this car has the eight-speed uh, ZF gearbox. Uh, the M2 has uh, a seven-speed dual-clutch system. Uh, however, so it's so when you're on the motorway, you've got an extra gear. So of course lower revs. So that means that actually the M240i is a little bit better on fuel. So if it's that that you uh, you are concerned about, then uh, that's another plus point for the M240. Now, I suppose really this is the main sort of point why, the main reason really why I chose the car, this car over the M2, and that is down to the price. An M2, I was looking on Auto Trader earlier, that for about 10 grand more, that, so, so, so we're talking about, um, you know, 2018, that's what this is, uh, just over 30,000 30, miles, and um, this car, when I bought it over a year ago, was 22 grand. I've just seen one as well, uh, 67 plate on Auto Trader um, for about for about what I paid about, about what I paid for this. Um, an M2, 
as I say, uh, about the same sort of age, you know, same sort of mileage, is about 10 grand more. To actually get a decent M2, you're gonna have to spend over 30 grand still. And that really, like, I know there are faster cars than the M240, I know that. But for the money, you just really cannot go wrong with this at all. So I suppose really, uh, my sort of my sort of opinion on it is that if you are buying a car uh, and you want, you, you've got the intent of modifying it because let's face it, the M240i is a bit more it's a bit more understated compared to the M2. I mean, you, I cannot. I love the looks of the M2, but really, for value for money, for you've got a quick, great handling and always something that's always going to put a smile on your face and something as i mean touch wood as reliable as the b58 engine because you've got a much better engine so you, you just sort of have to ask yourself the question really is it really worth 10 grand more all right yeah if you don't have a, a limited slip diff if you don't have an end performance version you are you really do want to be spent and it's something i've got planned down the line uh, getting a limited slip diff fitted um, so I suppose really that better like better shockers, better suspension, you know, stuff like that. That's stuff you can do down the line, and it is all going to cost you good money. But at the end of the day, you sort of think I don't really think it's still going to come to less money than it is um, it is for an M2. So I suppose bottom line is really uh, my opinion really is that if you if you're buying a car for the intent to modify it, you know, you want to push power stuff like that that I actually think I don't actually think there's much point in buying the M2 if you want if you want a decent car out of the box so you want you've got good enough you've got enough power you've got a great handling car out of, out of the box as standard then the M2 is probably your car to buy that's uh, I think that's that's my sort of uh, bottom line I bought this car uh, with the intent to modify it so that was sort of like the main and the and with the value for money as well that was kind of the main that was kind of the main selling point for me personally the different people's circumstances might be different um, you might have people with money no object and stuff like that I was on a bit of a budget so you know that was um, uh, that's why it sort of led me to this but when I actually when I actually drove it I was actually really really surprised so um, I thought, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely the car for me. So yeah, anyway, guys, I think that is. I think we've we've covered pretty much everything. I think uh, really in this video. Oh, of course, before we end, uh, as promised, uh, what have I got planned coming to the channel in the not too distant future? Well, as I say, um, in, a, in about a couple of days after this video goes live, uh, might have already happened by now, depending on when you guys are watching this, but. Um, but yeah, I've got two very, very big videos coming to the channel. There's going to be, uh, well, if for people who watch Top Gear back in the day, uh, you'll definitely appreciate what I've got coming. So the first video is going to be um, a one tank challenge. I'm going to be driving all the way from Grimsby, all the way down to Land's End in Cornwall. I'm going to be attempting to drive this car 430 miles on just one tank of fuel. Uh, so three litre, six cylinder engine, is it going to be possible? Well, until we, uh, until I've actually att attempted that, we don't know. And then the video after that, this is uh, definitely um, a big, this is definitely the, the main event, I think. Uh, the video you see after that is going to be me uh, attempting to get from Land's End to Nest Point in Lowestoft before the sun rises. As you, you probably remember a particular Top Gear episode where Jeremy Clarkson attempted to do that uh, in a supercharged Jaguar xj so uh yeah those are two definitely worth subscribing guys because uh you don't want to miss out on anything and as i say uh do give me a follow on instagram as well if you haven't done so already um because i'm going to be posting live updates uh, from the trip uh, and of course uh, you guys can see what i get up to in real time by the way i think that i think it's going that's going to be it for today guys so if you've enjoyed the video guys you found it useful then a thumbs up is always appreciated also consider subscribing uh, if you haven't done so already and if you do that do not forget to hit the bell icon make sure you turn on all notifications this road is terrible <laughs> uh, so you don't miss out on any future stuff to come to the channel okay so until next time guys thank you all so much for watching make sure you look after yourselves stay safe and i will see you all very soon